So we're directly jumping to the next session, which is presented by Christian Umbach. Christian Umbach is co-founder of and CEO of Xapix, and he's talking about democratizing enterprise AI, leveraging the power of ML around platform use cases across different industries like manufacturing, industry 4.0, uh, mobility and real estate and retail. So the stage is yours, Mr. Umbach. Perfect, thank you so much. Uh, hello everyone, very nice to um, spend the next 20 minutes um, with you. I'm excited to talk about um, a little bit of our journey, uh, as hopefully the, also the, the slides will be uh, coming up here, um, which is essentially around uh, democratizing enterprise AI. And it's a, it's a topic space that we can also see here in the, um, the summit is talked about a lot. Um, I would like to really make this uh, specific to uh, four uh, use cases that um, we've been working on with, with our customers here. Um, at Zapix, but also building on uh, broader experience, whether it's from the academic side um, or work um, across the industries from everywhere, from, from Amazon to different automotive companies, different manufacturing companies, um, and others in the space. Um, um, we want to make this a little bit hands-on, so um, Nico from our team will drop a, a question a uh, little survey in um, throughout the, the session. Um, we'll be curious about your uh, your feedback there and um, we'll get right to it uh, right now. Um, for us, what's, um, what we started with um, was really an API-based approach uh, for four and a half years ago um, with Zapix to essentially build the basis of making data flow. But for us, it has become the basis of essentially uh, building and uh, scaling a company that now puts um, enterprise AI very much um, in its in its core, and um, you know if you look at the, um, the the systems around us, the environment that we're in, it's not the technology in the end uh, that is driving the pace. The the business is very much driving the pace of adoption, and the business may have requirements around new digital business models, new ecosystems, the integration of uh, environmental, social uh, governance data, for instance, and the direction of sustainability, or the pure pressure to perform and to survive um, the, next, you know, uh, the next fall because everyone's going to be shopping for Christmas and they really need to provide um, a good shopping experience and have the inventory ready, or um, actually launch the the models and uh, the services that have been on on slides for a couple of years now um, and bring them to market and really deliver on that that promise um, companies today fall in the entire spectrum from being very nascent to being um, obviously ones that have maybe been built working for 10 15 years um, on the topic space and um, in our session today, we want to highlight a few elements because um, what I feel strongly about is that the topic of AI and the benefit from AI um, can be leveraged along the entire spectrum. Um, but at the same time, democratization means that everyone has access to it, which I think today in the market is not necessarily um, the case, not because the technology is not out there, but because the link between the business side and the technology side is sometimes missing. So when we say enterprise AI, what we mean by that is essentially looking at three different steps. Um, the first critical part is um, the unification piece. Unifying data, making data flow in, in that sense is the underlying basis of um, any activity that you want to realize. Um, there are a lot of companies out there, I think a lot of teams which start with um, the model. They, they, want to they want to build the perfect AI, they want to build the perfect model. Um, and um, I think it's unfortunately not, it hasn't proven to be the, the right way to approach the problem because um, while they may have the perfect model, it doesn't get the real data in production. So that's one of the reasons why, you know, you know the stats already 87% of projects in that field oftentimes fail um, because they fail to deliver the return on investment. So we feel strongly that it starts with making data flow. 
Um, and it ends with uh, the connection piece. Connecting the enterprise is key to, again, have that end-to-end -end flow. And then in the middle, you can actually start introducing machine learning models. Um, again, as a evolutionary path, uh, maybe starting really from like simple models, even simple functions there, um, and then um, being able to get into to very comprehensive models. And we'll, we'll have a few examples um, around that now. Um, so if we zoom out of those three steps a little bit, um, really what we're what we're seeing in this this picture here is going to carry us a little bit through the the presentation overall is um, essentially the, uh, the the necessity obviously to connecting real-time systems um, and more and more real-time systems, whether it's from sensors, whether it's just the magnitude of data. Um, that is passing through and is being provided from both newer systems, but also more legacy systems, depends on what you're connecting to. Um, and then when it comes to machine learning, actually leveraging the, the property that machine learning models today um, in the vast majority can be made accessible through um, an API. And for, for us, we've built uh, comprehensive tooling around that to uh, just bring that into a no-code or low-code setup where you can just plug in your model in, in that context. And then in the end, you know, your, your model should be doing all the, the magic um, that uh, you've designed it for, but um, the core value then really is only realized if you manage to integrate it and distribute uh, the outcome to the specific target systems um, in, in the enterprise. So. Before we really dive into the four use cases, uh, what we're curious about um, and kind of your input on that is how far along um, are you with, with your team, with your organization about the topic today? Is that only for, for big corporates, which maybe started a few years ago? Um, and or you know, are, are you much, much further along? So um, you'll see the, the link in, in the chat, but also here, um, on the slide, um, as a reference, curious about your feedback there, um, and then we'll keep you in the loop on, on the results around that. So let's dive right in into kind of the four specific use case categories. And we're, we're going to start with, with retail. Um, really, the, the journey that I would love to take is giving you a little bit of the insights on the specific challenges and like through that also seeing similarities um, across the, the industries. So the first one here um, is in one of the most exciting fields right now in terms of speed and velocity, the aggregation of um, e-commerce sellers, e-commerce firms. Um, you can, um, if you want to dig into it a little bit, it's usually in the fulfilled by Amazon business. There's a huge industry coming up, which is buying up individual sellers. And in the end, what the, the challenge that these companies are, are facing, what it boils down to, is both common organization. Um, you want to bring together um, different approaches, build um, a, a common data model around that, build a common pro process around it, but also then um, build really intelligence into that process such that more and more automation can drive it. And you're actually able to keep up with the complexity there's no chance that you can steer um, 10 million, 20 million products um, across different sort of brands and sellers that you have aggregated with traditional approaches. So machine learning is key for you to actually be able to have a somewhat solid foundation for, for the business. And for um, these folks, what they, in the end, what matters to them is logistics optimization, ad optimization, product pricing, but also um, even figuring out uh, the, the right financial information in that context. And um, while maybe some of that information isn't as real-time critical, the pure mass of information here um, makes this a very um, you know, um, solid uh, technical challenge as well. Um, and one of those drivers around the technical challenges is um, the complexity of channels. Um, in this case here, think about a company that wants to 
distribute through Amazon, wants to distribute through Facebook marketplace, through Shopify marketplaces, and so forth. In the end, to do this effectively, um, they're communicating with the APIs uh, behind all of those marketplaces and are now aligning these processes and bringing in intelligence. The, the picture that many of them sort of initially faced was kind of the spaghetti here that is shown. So really a complexity that, that was hard to manage on their way while they actually want to rather focus on the right side of the picture, focus on the business outcome and around logistics, ads, and, and so forth. So the process here that, that we're advocating for is really starting with a view on um, unifying data. So going from a single channel to multi-channel, let, having the ability to take a defined data model, take it across those channels, even though the underlying channels themselves may have variations in that, that is key to embarking on that process. The second part then is, is around connecting the enterprise. You want to have the data actually end up where your teams need it, in a data warehouse and an ERP and other systems. And only then the, the third step is really bringing in further um, intelligence, maybe initially just a, a logic, a rule-based function, but then leveraging that into building out more, more insight there. Now, let's accelerate into manufacturing. Somewhat similar picture, different context here, but um, again, we can see that the complexity starts with um, the ability to connect to different machines, cameras, and other systems on the manufacturing side, bring it in, bring it together, and then feed the, the right target systems with that around production data, repair order data, and uh, so forth. Um, I wanted to give you a quick example from that because um, working with customers in the field, it actually oftentimes starts with smart triggers. So what you can see here is an example of real-time data coming in and different triggers being set such that either the SCADA or the MES systems, which are manufacturing specific systems, are being hit and uh, re receive um, the, the specific results. Now, once you have mastered this stage, then it's time to go to the next stage, which is really pulling in machine learning powered automation. Now, from for the user here, and this can maybe be a product manager or even on the, on the business side, this will um, look like something that's, um, you know, for them, it's actually not a big difference whether it's a simple function or a machine learning model, because what it's delivering for them is an insight into uh, how their business should react in, in this. So what we can see here in this example, you have uh, real-time data that's coming in, it's going to a model, and based on the result of the model, actually different actions are being taken. So uh, maybe just kind of see for our demo for uh, the Slack channel, a warning is sent or a specific alert, depending on the results that are being delivered. Now, um, we've um, been building a, a use case with uh, Bosch Rexroad around that. Bosch Rexroad and with their Control X product, they're experts in equipping um, production sites, factory lines um, with intelligence, so with, uh, with both sensors, with systems around that. And um, what you can see here is a, a soldering furnace. Um, in German, it's Lötofen. Um, one of the biggest energy consumers in a factory today. And what we were able to show is that by not only taking data from, from that, but also equipping it with the right data um, communication with energy systems around it and other pr production uh, relevant systems that, first of all, you establish that basis of making data flow and then step-by-step uh, step, you're bringing in intelligence and building on that. And we've seen great results uh, together on, on that use case. And really the way we think about it um, on an, um, I guess, specific um, level here is Again, the data that is passing through from the system has different actions, different um, notations that you want to realize with it. You Sometimes you want to update your data sets. You want to train uh, your model. You want to kind of train the, uh, the prediction, um, actually posting the prediction. This is probably done here, the uh, production usage of, of the model, and obviously check against the performance to see 
um, how your model is performing. There's a lot behind that. Um, I'll uh, spare you the, the complexity um, right now. Let's dive into mobility. Again, our um, uh, favorite uh, flow here that, that we're seeing again, you, know, you can see it's that, um, again, here it might be the uh, real-time data that's coming from the vehicles, from trucks, um, but at the same time may also be coming from mobility services providers. The use case here is much more around fleet management, around digital offerings. And I wanted to share with you a use case uh, we presented with, with Goodyear, which was already almost two years ago here, um, but the ability to essentially connect consumer fleets with a new service offering that they launched was very much based on the ability to connecting the different mobility services provider, connecting the different vehicles, and then bringing in intelligence into that flow to really turn vehicle data into something that helps them identify like what's the right job to, to deliver on and what is the right uh, service for, for the customer to, to realize. And finally, the fourth example um, is coming out of, out of the real estate world where now the, the systems um, that are being connected here, obviously both the traditional real estate systems, um, sometimes very custom systems in, in the industry segment here, but also increasingly real-time sensors in, um, in the assets. And if we take a step back and think about what do companies here actually want to realize there's a lot of regulation coming into the space. Um, and similarly, at the same time, a, a lot of um, awareness to build and invest in more sustainable assets. Um, and that's, so environmental, social governance, compliance um, appears really at the forefront of both funds, but also the operators of those businesses. So having the ability to manage the data flows and then here again, bring in intelligence is key. And we have an, an example here from uh, Stefan from HIH uh, group um, who shared this this last year where um, based on the, the tooling that we provide them, but initially built an, an integration layer, but then on top of that really realized what they framed as a digital real estate passport service, which is in the end, uh, machine learning or AI powered ability to um, figure out the, the right performance, the right um, forecasting for um, the real estate space and um, bring in essentially the right additional data to enrich it and to really explore the right connections. Um, the point that I, I wanted to make with um, kind of this session today um, is really about, you know, it's an exciting space, but it's more than just models. And um, I'll pull in a, um, an overview from Gartner here. Um, having really, good, well, having effective um, enterprise AI initiatives requires more than machine learning operations. It requires the full flow between data operations, machine learning operations, DevOps, and um, we've really seen the need of, of that come together, which for us, and this is going to be kind of my, my final slide here, brings um, me to, to this picture, um, which is, it's not only about the brain um, in the end, which, which holds you know, the, um, the kind of the smartness, maybe it's the representing the model here to, to drive the decision. It's also about the spinal cord because only with the spinal cord, only with the ability in the enterprise to push out the data and to connect the data, you're actually going to get the brain to talk to every single part in your body. And I'm curious to have a conversation with, with you around where, where you are within your organization. Um, we've made uh, some of our products available to the open community. If you want, you can try them out. Um, otherwise, uh, feel free uh, to, to ping me, ping our team with, with feedback, curious on a deep dive. And I thank you for, for your time today. Thanks a lot for the presentation. I think we have time for one question I would like to address to you. You were talking about, or you were talking about democratizing um, 
AI, enterprise AI. So could you give us some insights in how companies who don't have experience with data a lot, with AI a lot, uh, how they, when they use your platform, how they build their own like within company ecosystem, within company knowledge based on your, in the cooperation with your ecosystem or your platform? Yeah, so the democratizing part really goes back to a, a key fundamental parts. One is um, price point. Uh, like a lot of organizations don't have five or 10 million to spend for their first big uh, AI project. And that's, um, for us, what we see is that by actually identifying a few key systems to connect, they can already start with initially quite quite simple automation and then understand much better where to specifically spend and connect. And it's at a, at a price point, which is you know, 10 to 100 times lower than um, what um, a traditional AI company would probably come, come in with. Um, the other part is really about the focus on no-code and low-code components in the tool set, because you know, not everyone needs to be a... Uh, an expert in a specific field here. You, you can't be an expert in, in data ops, machine learning ops, and DevOps at the same time. So leveraging low-code components actually makes this topic much more open to uh, um, companies and to, to teams in general because um, you can bring in your specific knowledge while um, we essentially help augment um, and you could say automate the flows around that then. Uh, such that it really becomes much more accessible um, as a as a tool as a platform for the teams. Thanks a lot for the presentation, also for your considerations regarding this uh, second layer. Thanks a lot for the presentation. Feel free to connect to uh, Christian Umbach in in the following parts of the Big Data AI Summit, and see you soon. Thank you. <laughs>